So I can give you two certainties. One is uh, whatever I say uh, will be woefully inadequate. Uh, the second is uh, I did uh, write some things that are available freely online which may uh, shed some more light. Most of uh, what I write uh, has to do with proposals and I think this is the right approach. We should emphasize not just what we are against but also what we are in favor of. And uh, there I did s do some homework and in addition to these two certainties which will hold uh, even if I drop dead now, nah, the, there is the promise that if I don't drop dead and we continue, uh, there may be even better things uh, through some collaborative work. Uh, I do believe that uh, synergistically we may offer a lot more than what we come to the table with. I mean, what I, I'm in a position to maybe promise is a small subset of what we can do together, obviously. And uh, in saying this, I'm assuming that some of us can go beyond, uh, let's say, binary thinking. There has been far too much of binary thinking. It wasn't invented by the so-called capitalists and so-called socialists long before them. Christians uh, were guilty of a lot of binary thinking. Oh, it's you're either with us or you're against us. Either you uh, subscribe to our orthodox version of Christianity or to hell with you, whatever. And even before then, uh, the, who knows who knows what existed. But we seem to continue this and we just change the two, uh, let's say, uh, antagonists and say, okay, here's the uh, Muslim terrorists and here's the uh, defenders of freedom or whatever. And uh, we assume that if you prove just one side to be the evil guys, you don't need to bother proving that the other guys are the good guys because there has to be a good guy somewhere. This is how uh, literature is built, this is how movies are made. There has to be some good guy, right? And not realizing that throughout history there had been all shades of gray and uh, you know, people who do some good work and who do a lot of evil also. And uh, I was introduced as some kind of a historian and I do know something about history, but I always preface uh, what I want to say with the undisputed fact that most of our past is prehistory, prehistoric. So history is a relatively recent thing and uh, whatever it is has a great deal to do with people who are in a position to write, who are, who are able to write monuments, etc. So it's to be doubted anyway, but uh, we have a potential that we can maybe pass judgment on. We have existed on this planet for more than 90% of our story, the prehistoric story, and we did not have nation states, we did not have empires, we did not have religions that claim to represent everybody, to speak to everybody, or to assume that the, you know, every uh, breathing human being is the son of this kind of a god or that kind of, we did not have those things, apparently. Uh, we can't uh, ascertain this, but uh, it's easy enough to guess. So if this is the case, we do not have to take for granted the continuation of nation states. We do not have to take that for granted. Even though at present uh, they are running the show, uh, they have you know armies, etc., and the you know, media, we do not have to take this for granted. And the other thing is, uh, presently there are supposedly strong ideologies. Now I grew up in Turkey, spent uh, the first half of my life there, and I know something about uh, this kind of uh, ideological rift. It was Cold War. So I, at the time, growing uh, through the uh, 70s, when there was a lot of terrorism of a different kind, and I'm sorry to say that we miss that kind of terrorism, where people would say, if you don't do that, we're going to do this. And you wouldn't do that, and they would do that, you know, whatever, you know, A, B, and they would immediately claim responsibility. Those were the good old days. Now people don't even claim responsibility. They don't give you warning. And, well, what is this? Anyway. But there was a lot of uh, you know, robbery, a lot of terrorism, kidnapping, this and that. And I was g growing in an environment where much of the ideological, uh, let's say, uh, division was between the so-called uh, socialists or communists or lefties and the ultranationalists or fascists or whatever you want to call them. And these people imagined that the future belonged to them. They each assumed this. And at the time, there was a, mo a small minority of um, Islamic uh, this or that. Uh, 
but people thought that uh, Islam does not have a future, you know. You're, you're lucky if you last another century or something, you'll disappear. Maybe some people were assuming the same thing for Christianity or, I don't know, Judaism. How wrong they were, right? Now, this has much to do with uh, the problems we're facing today. Unfortunately, it seems to me that uh, there is uh, a lot of, let's say, maybe courageous act on the part of some Americans to blame America first, which may be a safe thing to do. America obviously does have a lot more power to do bad things, and they, you know, Americans are doing bad things. But it would be wrong to assume that if, if, if America ceased to do bad things all of a sudden, there would be no other bad guys. This is wrong to assume. And uh, I wrote some things about uh, the philosophy of science also, or some kind of philosophy of social science. And this is a very important point to make. Uh, when you're talking about causality, if you say that A causes B, so if I eliminate A, there won't be any B. This is a fallacy. And when it comes to matters like uh, militarism and occupations, invasions, expansionism, this is a deadly fallacy to fall into. It may be convenient for some people, but it uh, obviously, not only is it a fallacy, but it's a, it would be, at this point, confirming a common verdict on so-called lefties, which is that we are all naive. We don't know about uh, politics, st strategy, etc. It, it would be confirming that. So we should say that even if A ceases to exist, which is, let's say, the United States, the United States is an expansionistic power. There's no question about it. They had been expansionistic for centuries. They never gave up. And guess what happened after the end of the so-called Cold War? They wanted to expand NATO instead of, you know, getting rid of it maybe, right? No. So obviously the United States is expansionistic, but if it ceased to be expansionistic, would the world be safer for the smaller powers? I don't know. That depends, I have to say. And uh, there had been times when people who should know better were asked uh, questions like, you know, how do we deal with terrorism? Uh, let's say Chomsky was asked. And I think the first thing uh, that a wise person should have said was that criticizing anti-terroristic acts should not be limited only to those people who come up with solutions. Anybody should be able to criticize these efforts. A child should be able to say, this is wrong. The subsequent question should not be, OK, so what do you want us to do? A child doesn't have to answer that. A child should be able to say, this is wrong. Any moral agent should be able to say, you can't do this. This is, you know, this is inviting more trouble. So if somebody asks a guy like Chomsky or somebody else, uh, OK, you say, well, what do you want us to do? You, know, you want to fight terrorism? What, what are your proposals? I think the first preface should be this. I don't have to give you pro proposals. But in case you're asking, well, you know, here are a few. And these are subject to criticism also. But in my judgment, terrorism is a moving target. It has to be. It is in its nature. It's foolish to say, oh, yeah, we can get rid of it this way. It, it will respond to your response to it. So in my judgment, one thing to, uh, to say is that this doesn't have to be through nationalistic policies. And it wasn't either, by the way. United States, even under George Bush, did seek uh, global c collaboration. In the, I mean, they approached Russians, etc. And this is the wise thing to do. But once again, it has to go beyond the efforts of nation states or existing uh, international organizations. I think in this respect, uh, United Nations is not much of uh, an organization to deal with this kind of thing. We don't have any organization to deal with it properly. Throughout the Cold, uh, Cold War years, we knew, we lived through times when uh, we were aware that either bloc could launch hundreds, if not thousands, of nuclear ballistic missiles in less than half an hour and destroy targets within half an hour. Now, neither of these powers could answer a 911 call. They, had, they, they issued no guarantee that we can get there in half an hour. If you are being killed by your boyfriend or husband or whatever, you call us, we give you no guarantee that we'll be there. By the way, this has been ascertained. There was a case in Washington, D.C. The police couldn't get there. And the person who made the call informing on something happening next door was killed. But 
basically the judge says, yeah, well, th what do you think this is? This is not, I'm, I'm, this is not, this is not his words, but uh, this is not Domino's Pizza, you know, they don't give you free delivery if, you, if they don't come there in half an hour. So, but they, I hope I'm not trivializing it. There are many other threats, far more serious maybe, like uh, natural disasters, where the state gives you no assurance that they can save you. Even in the case of Katrina, where the victims are at sea level, next to one of the most navigable rivers in the world. This country has a lot of airplanes, helicopters, whatever. Did they help the people there? No. So we lived through times when they have a lot of destructive power, nation states and empires, but they have no promise to give you basic security. And there are times when they found it in their interest, apparently, to deny existing threats. They would lie to you about existing diseases, contagious diseases. They would sometimes do things to promote diseases, like you know, Tuskegee experiments, etc. And there were other times when, right after 9-11, they said, oh, the air is uh, uh, safe to breathe. Why are they lying about basic things like that? Well, obviously, your safety is not their concern. So my point is, nation states cannot be relied on for whatever reason, you know, that they accumulated a lot of reasons. We need uh, things that are beyond nation states, supranational, with enough power to, if necessary, arrest uh, leaders, even if they are, you know, leaders of the free world or whatever. This didn't happen, by the way, with George Bush did it.